I want to give a victory speech on the evening of Election Day, which is coming up very quickly. A vote for Morrissey is a vote for me. A vote for Marsha is really a vote for me. And a vote for Cindy is a vote for me. And a vote for Steve is a vote for me. Remember this, a vote for David is a vote for me and our agenda to make America great again. I'm not on the ballot, but in a certain way, I'm on the ballot, so please go out and vote. So you get the feeling there that a vote for those candidates are a vote for him. President Trump making it clear the midterm elections are, in his view, a referendum on his presidency, which in truth is how midterms kind of work. We are just 22 days away. His popularity numbers appear to be moving slightly. Are any other numbers on the move? Who can we ask about that kind of thing? How about our national political correspondent, Steve Kornacki, who's at the big board with us tonight? Steve. Brian, yeah, and getting some mixed and, and confused using signals, I think, a little bit when it comes to the state of the midterms basically three weeks out. You mentioned the president's approval rating. Here's Gallup with their latest check-in. They have him at 44 percent. Now, remember, all year we've been saying that basically if, if Trump, the closer he can be to the mid-40s, to 45, or ideally for Republicans higher than that, the better chance Republicans are going to have of holding the House. So here's Gallup with his best number for them in a while, 44 percent. Not the only poll that's been showing an uptick. If you average together every Trump approval rating poll out there right now, he's at 43.5%. And yes, that is a jump of about 2.5 points just in the last couple weeks. Again, that's significant. Low 40s, Democrats like their chances. Mid 40s, Republicans start to like their chances. It can make a big difference. Uh, numbers, though, have been all over the place, right? The Senate has looked like it's trending to the Republicans. The generic ballot for the House has looked strong for Democrats lately. We now throw in the variable of Trump's approval rating. One possibility here, we're getting a lot of polls from different House races. One possibility is there's almost two different tracks developing here. And let me show you what I mean. Two different types of congressional district that are competitive here. Here's one of them. This is what we talk about all the time, the suburbs. This is suburban Philadelphia, Bucks County, a little bit of Montgomery County, Republican incumbent here. Hillary Clinton carried this district in 2016. And look, this is a poll just in the last couple days, the Democratic challenger up by seven points. It could be that the Democratic energy, maybe post-Kavanaugh, maybe there's a burst for Democrats here, a boost for Democrats, but this is just what Democrats want to be seeing right here. But we say the numbers are complicated. Take a look at the other kind of district. This is a Democratic-held district right now. Minnesota's eighth. This is the Iron Range. Donald Trump carried this district in 2016. It went from Obama to Trump. Democrats hold the seat in the House right now, but look at this. Republicans running 15 points ahead here. This would be a Republican gain. So it's possible. It's a complicated House picture here. Maybe it is that in these suburban areas, Republican seats, districts that Clinton won in 16, Democrats may be doing even better now than they were a week ago, but maybe that Trump base in, in rural parts of the country could be shoring up too. It presents a more complicated, and I think at this point, muddled picture, Brian, uh, of where the battle for the House stands. It, Democrats have the advantage right now, but that Republican support could be shoring up a little bit right now. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC. NBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.